KIA Flight 234 on final approach. KIA Flight 234 beginning our descent. Take the plane. It's so much faster, you said. I don't want to hurt your feelings, old chap, but I would have been happier on the ferry. Too late now, my friend. Anyway, they're probably battling a fearful storm crossing the channel. Yes, but if a boat gets into difficulties, you can swim. Lower landing gear. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Due to a technical difficulty, we will be performing an emergency landing. She looks a shade nervous. I think we'd better fasten our seat belts and cross our fingers. And grit our teeth. You said it, old bean. Control to BEA, Flight 234. Emergency procedures initiated. Fire crews in position. Runway cleared. Oh, boy. Here we go. Level out, baby. Level out. Attention, please. Flight 234 from London has landed safely. All passengers and crew are well. We were lucky. Very lucky. Indeed. One needs luck in a plane. Statistically, flying is very safe. My dear chap, I was joking. Ah, here's your driver. Goodbye, Francis, and I wish you the best of luck. You'll sort out that spy case. Thank you, Philip. Oh, give my regards to Professor Labrousse. Oh, why not ask him to lunch tomorrow, 1 o'clock, Hotel Louvois? I'd like to see him again. Excellent idea, Blake. I'll see you tomorrow. Look at that. They're forecasting sun for tomorrow. Ha! That's what they said for today, and it's raining cats and dogs. Bunch of incompetents. Poor Labrousse. He must be quite embarrassed. Good evening, Professor. Evening, Ernest. They say your flight had trouble. No, not really. The landing was a little acrobatic. That's all. That's one word for it. How about stressful, difficult? <laughs> Whichever, you sure have a gift for understatement. And how is Professor LeBruce? With the weather kicking up a storm, everyone's on his back. But it's not his fault. He doesn't choose the weather, he just forecasts it. I know, but the weather is certainly unusually unsettled these days. If you ask me, Professor, it's all because of that... Oh, now the windshield wipers have gone. Can you fix them? No way, Professor. I'll just have to be extra careful. It's not much further. I can't see a thing. Look out! Are you all right, Professor? Not bad for the second crash in one day, thank you. Right. Now, let's think. Where there's a dog, there's a master. And where there's a master, there's a house. And so someone must live near here. I'll go for help. You stay here in case someone comes along. Good idea, Ernest. I will. The Professor's right. Where there's a dog, there's the master. So let's go. Hello! Anyone here? Hey there! Uh. Oh. Ah, 
cotton of the clan McGregor. I smell like a pigsty. And of course there's not a sign in sight. Should I go right or should I go left? Hey! Over here! Stop! Do come in, my dear fellow. I hope you had a good drip, Professor. It certainly wasn't dull. I nearly drowned in the river. The river? Yes, let me explain. Uh, later, my dear man. What you need now is a hot bath and a change of clothes. Thank you. Uh, by the way, where's your luggage? Unfortunately, I neglected to bring it with me when I went bathing. I was Ooh. caught by surprise. Congratulations, Catherine. That was an absolutely wonderful meal. I know you love French cooking, so I made an extra effort. The professor doesn't eat enough to keep a bird alive. Uh, thank you. That will do, Catherine. Yes, of course, Professor. Good night, Professor. Good night. And thank you once again, Catherine. Mortimer, the situation is alarming. No. My weather service looks ridiculous these days because all our recent forecasts turn out wrong. But it's worse than that. Although we've done a great deal of research, we can find no scientific explanation for these harmful weather patterns. What's more, they affect only one geographical area, France. The United Kingdom hasn't been touched, although it's so close. Thus far, that is. Oh, it's time for the news, if you don't mind. At 9 o'clock this evening, a hurricane suddenly struck the British coast, heavily damaging major ports. Now you see, your country is threatened as well. A flight from Brussels to Rome crashed in the Alps during a freak snowstorm. In Germany, a train derailed after a landslide. Now all Western Europe is in danger. Hello? Oh, good evening, madam. Yes, he arrived two hours ago. Well, I know the taxi got stuck somewhere and... Oh, how peculiar. If you would keep me informed, I'd appreciate it. That was Ernest's wife. He isn't home yet. Uh, she's worried. That's very odd indeed, though. I think it calls for investigation. Oh, don't worry. Ernest knows this area like the back of his hand. You're right, of course. No need to worry. Listen. Yeah? Do it right. The boss wants it clean as a whisk. You got it. We can't leave any clues. Here, Sandy. That's all there was in the glove compartment. It's clean. Do we shove it in the river? Yeah, yeah. The cops will be combing the place tomorrow. Crops in the southwest have been totally destroyed, and farmers in the region clashed with police during a violent demonstration held this afternoon. I knew it. I knew there'd be social and political upheaval. Mark my words, this is only the beginning. Finally, there are reports that a teacher near Cherbourg saw a strange ball of fire in the sky and managed to photograph it. <sighs> That's all we need. Mass hysteria. I'm not so sure. Really, Mortimer? It's a shameless hoax. I don't know, LaBruce. I don't believe I share your opinion. I have an idea that's so odd I hesitate to tell you about it. Well, go on. I'm listening. Just for the sake of argument, let's say this ball of fire really exists and it is the cause of all these upheavals. Oh, for no. the sake of argument, let's say someone is doing it on purpose. But, Mortimer, that's impossible. Uh, no one can control the weather. It is highly unlikely, I know, but it must be considered very carefully. I'm sorry, my dear chap. I've had a tiring day. I'll be better company in the morning after a night's sleep. Here is your room. Oh. Well, uh, Bruce, do you oh. still think it's a hoax? Well, I... I don't know what to think. Yeah, boss. The cabbie had a fare for sure, but there's no sign of him. None at all. His bag was in the trunk. He isn't French. What? Mortimer? And he's from London. Blast! We don't need him getting in our way. Watch out for him. That snoop is a real pain in the neck. 
No problem, boss. I'll keep him out of your hair. You can count on that. No, Sadie, don't do that. I have a better plan. Let him nose around as much as he likes, and when he's in too deep, then we'll nail him. Do you understand? <laughs> Mortimer, are you sure it's wise to go looking for clues on your own? <laughs> Nothing but a stroll in the country. Hmm. The weather's no better. Here's a map, so don't get lost. Thanks, old bean. Ernest's oh, wife called. He's still not back yet. Tell her not to worry. I'll find him for her. Don't forget, we're supposed to meet Blake at 1 o'clock in Paris. Expect me at 12. Professor, I think we should call the police. No, I suppose we can expect tornadoes next. By the tartan of Clan McGregor. It's a miracle I didn't drown. Now, let's take a look. There's the dam. I remember that. And the pool. But no taxi. All right, let's take it from the top. The accident happened here. And Ernest went off in that direction. Flash. Oh, oh my. I don't believe it. Everything indicates that the mastermind of this mysterious spy network is based in Paris. I think you're right, Captain Blake. However, we still don't know why they're doing this. So far, the only clue we have is the strange series of letters we managed to intercept. They're being tested in the lab. Durand? Yes, sir. I told him you were coming. I want him to show you the letters. Hello, Captain. Hello, Durand. Anything new? Nothing at all. See for yourself. Ah. Hmm. All sent general delivery and addressed to Per Henrik Kornstron. Henrik Kornstron. Hmm. Does that mean anything to you? No, nothing. Unfortunately. A blank sheet of stationery. Ah, I've seen that crest before, though. Scandinavia. Really? Yes, my department has had dealings with this company. Mm-hmm. Durand, would you please make me an enlargement of this crest and bring it to us as soon as you can? Yes, sir, Captain. Did you notice something we missed? We'll have to wait and see, won't we, my friend? After all, I could be wrong. While we're waiting, may I use your phone? I'm going to be late for lunch with Mortimer. Hotel Louvois, can I help you? No, Captain. Professor Mortimer isn't here yet. Professor LeBruce is there, waiting for him. One moment, please. Hello, LaBruce? What do you mean, gone? I won't be finished here for a while, so you'd better come and join me as quickly as you can. The second bead is much brighter than the others. Give us a close-up, would you? Certainly, Captain. Great Scott! It's microfilm. Good work there, Blake. Hmm, but I still don't start. know what it means, do you? Come in. Ah, there you are. Professor Labrousse, Inspector Pradier, Officer Durand. How'd you do, Professor? 
Still no sign of Mortimer? No. I can't imagine where he's gone. It's a mystery. And here's another one. This code looks unbreakable. By no means. The message is quite clear. Huh? You're joking, Labrus. I seldom make jokes, Captain. These are simply the standard codes that weather stations will use to transmit their findings to each other. I beg your pardon, but are you sure of that? Oh, absolutely. Look, barometric pressure, type and density of cloud cover, wind speed, but uh, two things puzzle me, though. First of all, these call signs don't belong to any weather station I know of. And secondly, this message is dated four days ago, but the readings are obviously based on today's weather conditions. Which could mean that these readings aren't merely observations. They could be forecasts. Could they be secret forecasts transmitted from one shadow weather station to another? I was convinced that Professor Mortimer's theory was preposterous, but now... What theory? Professor Mortimer believed that this catastrophic weather we're having might be controlled, staged. Bingo! Inspector, that's what the spies are trying to do, control the world's weather. Maybe so, but what for? I don't know, but I'm afraid that Mortimer's disappearance may be linked to this affair. Wakey, wakey, Professor. Here's your luggage. What's the meaning of this? Boss's orders. What boss? Who are you two? And what do you want? Keep your shirt on. The boss will lay it on the line for you in person. By the captain of Clan McGregor? Who is this boss? <laughs> I don't know who this Mortimer guy is, but the boss looks real pleased to have nabbed him. Eh, he must be a big cheese. A really big cheese. Yeah. Whoever he is, the boss is gonna deal with him personally. Uh, what about the other one? The taxi driver? Don't ask. I wouldn't worry about him. It's just a fly in the ointment. And we know how to deal with flies, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> He's disappeared without a trace. Mortimer doesn't do that sort of thing. I have a small place here in Paris. If you don't mind, I'd just like to go in and pick up my mail. It won't take us very long. While we're there, we can call Catherine in the country to see if Mortimer has tried to get in touch with us. Good idea. Dreadful weather we're having, Professor. There's been a lot of mail for you in the last few days. Thanks. We must rush. Professor, would you mind taking his mail up to Mr. Henry? No, of course My not. My legs aren't what they once were. No problem. Sorry to disturb you. Uh, here's your mail. Why, my dear professor, how kind of you to bother. I do appreciate it, believe me. Hmm. But now I must ask you to excuse me. I'm on the phone with an associate, long distance. Who her? Unbelievable! Blake is mixed up in this, too! I tell you, Le Bruce, I smell a rat. Hold on. Catherine, no news? I see. Yes, we're on our way, thanks. No, I'm sorry, Blake. She hasn't heard from Mortimer. And as for Ernest, the police haven't even found his cab. Let's go. Sharky, Freddy! Yeah, boss? Tail that twit, La Bruce, and don't lose him. Okay. Have you heard the latest? He's working hand in glove with Captain Blake. Give me a break. What's he doing elbowing into the act? It's obvious. He wants to rescue his friend Mortimer, so you make sure you knock them both out of the game right now. Understand? Whoa! Oops. <laughs> Get the car, quick, before we lose them. The boss wants them out of the game. I'll knock them out of the game. A telegram for you, Professor. It was just delivered. It's signed Mortimer. Presence urgently required in London. Tell Blake not to worry. Regrets and best regards, Mortimer. Well, well. May I see? Sent at 3 o'clock this afternoon from Rue de Rennes in Paris. That's near my apartment. How odd. He says, tell Blake not to worry. 
Why would he ask you to tell me that when he could have left a message at the hotel? Maybe he did leave a message there. You're right. I'll check. Hello? Not even a dial tone, LaBruce. Your phone is dead. Maybe the snow brought the lines down. Possibly. But I have a feeling that this telegram is nothing but a fake. A fake? I think someone's trying hard to make sure we don't look for Mortimer. And that means he's in danger. We must get the police. Let's take the car. See that car, Professor? Mm hmm? I think I remember... Ah! Oh! You were expecting company? Of course not. I... Blake, they shot at us. They've been tailing us in Paris. I saw that car when I slipped and fell on the ice. And I saw my neighbor get into that car a few days ago. Mr. Quanstrom, remember? Mr. Who? We all call him Mr. Henry because it's easier. But his real name is Per Henrik Quanstrom. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Quanstrom sent those men to keep us pinned down so we don't get in his way. But I don't see how Quanstrom could possibly know. My dear Labrousse, your home is bugged, I'm afraid. And that microfilm was intended for this man, Quanstrom, so he must be part of this network that's sabotaging the weather. Also, he sent us that telegram that was supposed to be from Mortimer. And that means we'll never solve this case until we have found Mortimer. We got him trapped. Yeah, in a nice warm house while we freeze. Ah, shut up. Blake, do you think they're trying to kill us? No, at least not right away. They'll come after us later? No, if they wanted to kill us, they'd have moved by now. That means that their only goal is to keep us nailed down here. My goal, on the other hand, is to unmask your mysterious neighbor in Paris, Quanstrom. How can I get to Paris other than by car? The train station's just around the corner, but... Have you a back door? Yes, into the garden. But from there, you still have to cross the street to get to the station. They'll see you. I'll have to chance it. I must get to Paris. Here's the key to my apartment in Paris. It might be of help. Indeed, it might. Thank you. Better go back inside, Professor. Stand in front of the window and pretend to be talking to me. What a clever idea! You can count on me, Blake. Best of luck, and be careful. <laughs> what a windbag. So, you see, my dear Blake, in these mm, trying circumstances... Uh, excuse me, Professor. Will Captain Blake be staying for dinner? Why, I... Has he left? Mm, no. I mean, yes, well, I mean... Just go away, please. Yes, uh, of course, Professor. <clears throat> now, as I was saying, Blake... Hmm. No cover. I'll have to run for it. Blake! He's on the lamp! Police! Someone just stole my mail van! If we lose them, we're toast. Come on, step on it. It's the cops! Coming fast! Damn, 
lost them. No way. This baby can beat the train. Hey, you two. What do you think you're doing? Driving like maniacs. Don't give me a hard time, okay? Just open the gate and we'll say no more about it. You got that? Yes, yes, of course, sir. Right away. It's about 90 seconds between subway stops. If I get off at the third one down the line... Who knows where he'll get off? We can check at every stop. That's exactly what we will do. Drive! Excuse me, sir. That's a great-looking hat. Oh, yeah? So what? So I'd like to buy it. Are you all right in the head? Yes. It's about the right size, and I'll buy it. Well, it's not for sale. It's important. You got it. Hey, mister! You wanna buy my overalls? Extra, extra! Read all about it! Here. <laughs> 69B de Vaugirard and quickly. Uh-oh, see that? What do you think? Let's go. Second floor on the left. He seems to be at home. This is the same wall as his apartment. If I'm right, there ought to be... Bingo. I knew it. Kornström is spying on Professor Labrousse. Lost him? You stupid fools! Who knows what Blake is up to now? We'll have to move out. Stay in touch! Hello. Get me Praje. Oh, well, I need him right away. It's Captain Blake. Tell him to bring a backup squad to 69B Rue de Vaugirard. Yes. <coughs> it's only two floors up. Hold on. You're nearly there. Hands up. Who are you? What do you want? Is it money you're after? If so... Stop. Over there. Why threaten me? You don't even know who I am. I... That's why I'm here. To find out who you are. Don't move, please. <laughs> you shouldn't have been so naive. A blast tricked by a rotten mangy... Careful. Your accent is slipping. Now tell me who you are. Of course, if you're sure you really want to know, my dear Blake. Here. <laughs> Ulrich! In person. You shouldn't be so naive, Captain. What? Thought you gave us the slip, didn't you, creep? Be polite now, Sharky. He's going to lay the gun down, aren't you, Captain? All right. You won this time, Ulrich. Whoa! Get a load of the artillery! Face it, Blake, you'll never beat me. Ah. Here come the cops. Up to the roof, quick! I say, Blake, you're in good shape. Not too bad for a man my age. I exercise when I can. Follow me.
There they are. Drop your guns. Give up, Ulrich. We have you covered. We have to back off. Cover us, Sharky. Okay, boss. Damn it! They're gonna get away! After them! Any closer and you're in for a surprise. It's too far to jump. We're done for, boss. They're not moving up there. I think they're trapped. We've got them! Maybe, but let's not be too sure. Blasted Ulrich has the most outrageous luck. All we can do now is search his apartment for clues to where he'll resurface. So how's the illustrious Professor Mortimer today? You enjoying your little holiday, Prof? By the Tartan of Clan McGregor, leave me alone. What do you want from me, you jackals? That's no way to talk. Come on, get up. Come with us. I suppose you're holding Ernest prisoner as well, aren't you? <laughs> Ernest? Is that his name? Ernest? Sure, he's here. All he does is lie in the corner of his cell and moan. All systems are go for the Operation General. The paratroopers can jump on schedule at 800 hours. Right, over and out. Come in. <laughs> Ulrich! By the Tartan of Clan... Of Clan McGregor, yes, yes. Good heavens, can't you find another expression? That one's beginning to bore me. Blast you, Ulrich. Causing me trouble yet again. Oh, no. It's you causing me trouble. And when I can least afford it, on the eve of my greatest mission. Ha! Your mission? You mean your scam, your treachery, Call your... Call it what you like. But I am responsible for the disasters now afflicting almost all of Europe. What do you say to that? I don't believe you, Ulrich. You're a blowhard and a loudmouth and a phony and a bore. Oh, enough of this. Let's take him to the lab, Sharky. What? After you, Professor. This is the only piece of paper Ulrich didn't manage to burn, Professor. It's a weather forecast. It'll be a catastrophe if it comes true. At 8 a.m. on the 13th, an unusually thick fog will blanket all France and its neighboring countries. That's tomorrow morning at 8. It's nearly midnight now. We know Ulrich is part of this plot. That being so, gentlemen, I fear the worst. What do you mean? Tell us! Let me think. A good part of Europe paralyzed by fog. If you wanted to invade France, what more could you ask? An invasion? Oh, come, Lake. I'll wager Ulrich has sold his services to a foreign power. You may be right, but how are we going to find him? By looking for Mortimer. Mortimer? Yes. Ulrich is no doubt holding him as a prisoner. Mortimer, let me introduce one of your most brilliant fellow scientists, Professor Mylog. A fellow scientist? No, he's more a thug like you. Now, now, mind your manners. You'll be interested in what he has to show you. In fact, you'll be fascinated. Oh. 
working in hidden weather stations like this one and using the latest in weather technology, we can inflict whatever weather conditions we choose on any region we like. You mean you have the power to reproduce natural phenomena artificially? Of course we have. All we need is the ability to heat or chill certain layers of the atmosphere whenever we choose to. Do you follow? Of course. But for that, you need a phenomenal source of energy as yet undiscovered. I have discovered it. You see, Professor, I have all the energy I need. I have managed to harness ball lightning. You've harnessed ball lightning? I have. That's just a scientist's dream. It can't be done. <laughs> oh, yes, it can. Um, tell me, Professor, what's that button for? Oh, that is... Thank you, Mylock. You've told him all he needs to know. Besides, it's almost H-hour. Sharky, take Mortimer back to his quarters. No problem, boss. You won't need a gun. You see, Sharky, in half an hour, the professor is going to die laughing. <laughs> when the fog rolls in, Professor, it'll be curtains for you and good riddance. <clears throat> Put him back in his cage. Sure thing, boss. Whatever you say. Move it! Come on, hurry up. Move it! Huh? Freeze! Good show, Ernest. Bravo! I'll have you free in a minute, Professor. You showed up in the nick of time, Ernest. Yep, that's the one. Yes? What? Where did you find it? I see. Keep me informed. More news, Captain. They finally found Ernest's taxi right here. Bingo. Close to the bridge that Mortimer was looking for when he disappeared. And between the bridge and the taxi, is an abandoned factory that intrigues me. As a secret headquarters, it couldn't be better. I'll alert the Army at once. Roger, General. Confirm Operation Meteor scheduled to begin in exactly three minutes from now. Read you loud and clear. Operation Meteor underway in three. We'll drop the paratroopers on your signal. Over. Attention, please. All personnel to battle stations. The countdown is about to begin. Hold it! Hand over those suits and make it fast! Now that's what I call a brilliant idea. Three, two, one, zero! I called out the SWAT teams as well. And they'll be there within the hour. Perfect. The fog's moving in. If we don't solve this case soon, it'll be too late. Good grief. What's the matter with everyone? Headquarters calling Pradier. Shh. HQ to Pradier. Professor LaBruce has analyzed the fog. He reports it contains toxic levels of oxygen and will produce marked euphoria. Subsequent effects will be greatly accelerated heartbeat, then cardiac collapse. Diabolical. Gas masks, you idiots! Put your masks on! We'll need gas masks, too. <laughs> Don't touch that computer, Miller. Professor, what do you want? Tell me how to stop this fiendish machine. You're the world-famous scientist. Why don't you figure it out for yourself? Attention, all personnel. Professor Mortimer has escaped. He's right here. Come and get him. Shoot anything that moves. I'll try to shut down this appalling operation. There's no time to work it out. 
There must be a master switch somewhere. This looks promising. No, don't touch it! <laughs> is gonna blow! Where is my lock, boss? Who cares? That way! Move! Faster! Drive faster! We're done for, Professor. No! Try over there! There has to be some way out! Oh. Ernest! Mortimer! Where's Mortimer? Quick, bring up the fire trucks! Look out! They haven't got a chance. No! Look at that! Mortimer! Ernest! They're alive! Ah! Oh, Rick! Hands up! Where is your boss, you villains? No idea. Do you know? Okay, okay. Just book these jokers. Come out, you scoundrel! What have we here? Give the man a warm welcome, boys. Do come out, old chap, before you catch cold. Rotten dog. French tech squad. I fear your friends are in for a rough ride back to base. And your mission is a total failure after all that work. It isn't over yet, Mortimer.